Yeah. What is going on? Welcome into the show. Mark Farzetta with you here at the Steven Singer Studio. Similar to a couple of, uh, what was it, uh, two weeks ago, where I was putting some pushing some buttons, producing the show more or less uh, right from here. I'm going to be doing that again, so I'll be even more in touch with you guys throughout the program. Uh, I teased last night, late last night, that we were going to have a special guest, a Super Bowl uh, a Super Bowl champion. Yes, with the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, I, and I've been saying for the last couple of days that I've been trying to get a special guest for you. And I can't think of a better time to have that special guest uh, than um, than today. On a day where, okay, before I get to that, I'll just tell you the guest. Brandon Graham. Brandon Graham is going to be on the show today. I am just super stoked to let you hear uh, the conversation that Brandon, and I, Brandon Graham and I had yesterday. Brandon tells me who he wants the Eagles to draft in the upcoming NFL draft. Uh, you know what else Brandon does? Brandon goes out there and he, and he tells me what's going on there with Jalen Hurts. He also tells me, he walks me through his off-season workout regimen, and he tells me what he wants to do post-playing career. So Brandon Graham will join the show uh, in just a couple of minutes, around 20 minutes. We'll talk to the great Brandon Graham. Look forward to that conversation. Uh, and uh, and then we will get to that other thing that uh, that, that really bothers me, but bothers me a lot, as a matter of fact. And that's how the Flyers played last night. And it also happens to be how the 76ers played in the second half of the game last night. Because everything fell apart for the Sixers. Now, they forced overtime. They didn't have Joel Embiid. They didn't have Seth Curry. Fine. But they should have won that game. They should have still been able to steal that game from the Milwaukee Bucks. And for whatever reason, in the third quarter, they really started letting that lead slip, uh, slip away. And and I know, it's the, I know it's the mentality of today's basketball game. I know it's the mentality of the NBA in general. But don't you want to work it down low a little bit? When you start to go ice cold from three, you should start working the ball down to the blocks a little bit. Try to get fouled. And Doc Rivers, bless his heart, after the game, acknowledged that. Said, you know what? Maybe we should have been driving a little bit more. Maybe we should have been getting fouled. Maybe we should have been getting to the foul line. Maybe that's a great idea because it is a great idea. And instead, you let the, the, the wheels come off the wagon and you lost total control of that game. And you can't do that against a team like the Bucks. You can get away with other teams. You can do that against other teams. That's fine. But the Bucks or the Nets, oh, you can't do that against those types of teams. You certainly can't do it against the Celtics either, who, by the way, blew my big bet. Thanks, boys. Anyway, uh, but when, it look, when you look at this squad and you look at this team, they're not good enough, especially without Joel Embiid, especially without Seth Curry, to not take advantage of whatever the other team's giving you down on the, blo down on the blocks. And especially if you're not driving the basketball, and you're not doing what Doc Rivers said after the game, which is getting fouled and going to the line. I know it's like a crazy idea in this modern era of basketball when everybody's living and dying by the three. I mean, I remember when we only used to say that ab about the Golden State Warriors. And, you know, for good reason for them, because they had Klay Thompson. They, 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 they had a healthy Klay Thompson. They had Steph, uh, Steph Curry, obviously. But you can't do that without those types of players. And especially when you lose Seth Curry from your lineup, and especially when you have Danny Green ice cold from three, and then Furcon hits a late three and forced overtime, great. That was excited as all get out when that happened. But you can't just continue to do that if you're having an off night. And I know that the shooter's mentality is the next one going in. The next one is going in. Cool. But when it's the team, the entire team, Jason Kelsey, the whole team, then you got to knock it off start going to the hoop. Oh. It it was it was so frustrating, and and I'll be honest with you. Normally on Sixers and Flyers days, uh, I'm, I'm I'm primarily on the Sixers, and I'm flipping to check the, uh, the 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 Flyers. And last night during the game, I start getting the updates on my phone, and I'm trying to ignore it. And it's like one nothing Rangers, two nothing Rangers, three nothing Rangers. Anyway, long story short, nine nothing. The Flyers lost nine to nothing. What the hell, man? I mean, after the game, I mean, during the game, you, you saw the Flyers just look lethargic. They, they they turned the puck over, losing the battles throughout. I mean, and a nine nothing game. Can you even break that down? Can like is it even worth me saying that they couldn't win a battle on the boards again? Is it worth me saying? They turn the puck over again. Is it worth me saying that they have no defense? Is it, is it really? Is it worth me even saying that? I feel like I have to because it was a 9 nothing loss. 
But after the game, it was one of those situations where Elaine Vino just looked like the type of guy that was done with it all. And he had no answer for the rest of this. And I felt like it was more along the lines of when he called this loss embarrassing, excuse me, acknowledged that this loss was embarrassing. I at least uh, took this from the, the post-game press conference, aside from the fact that he was very disappointed in his team. Uh, hey, Chuck, I think I've done all I can do here. I think we're going to need a lot of help. And now the questions are starting to be asked about this hockey team that I had great expectations for going into the season. I had phenomenal expectations for uh, Carter Hart. I, I had big, big expectations for him. Uh, big expectations for uh, uh, Travis Konechny, Claude Giroux, Sean Couturier. James Van Reems like, is the only guy that's like completely off the charts, at least for the entire season, off the charts what I expected to see from him this year. And 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 right now it's it's just coming down to whether or not Chuck Fletcher wants to start making moves to uh to look at this team saying that hey this ain't our year boys uh, let's let's do it's plan for another year and I'm sure uh, Claude Drew would just love to hear that again because going through what he went through in the whole Hextall rebuild type of process but really it, it's up to these players to turn it around right now and if they can't do it and the coach can't do it then Chuck Fletcher is going to have to do something and after a loss like that nine to nothing something something better be around the corner to shake this team up. And Al- Elaine Vino seems like he's out of options. Seems like he doesn't know what button to push right now. And after the game, it, to me, the whole attitude was, I, yeah, it, it was an embarrassing loss. And uh, hopefully we'll regroup and we'll do better in Long Island. Good luck to you, fellas. That was awful. Absolutely awful last night. Uh, it, was a, it was a jam-packed day in the, in the world of sports in Philadelphia. Jam-packed day. And it, it really started with Howie Roseman and Nick Sirianni speaking for the first time uh, since uh, the end of the year with Howie Roseman and speaking for the first time since his uh, introductory press conference and media tour, initial media tour here in Philadelphia with Nick Sirianni. Now, I didn't really get anything out of Nick Sirianni. Uh, I, I heard from Howie Roseman that he loves ball and he wants to talk ball with everybody. Let's talk ball. And that's 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 my uh, Howie Roseman impression from yesterday. Uh, and I'll let you hear from Howie himself. But I really didn't get anything out of Nick Sirianni that I didn't already very much assume uh, to be correct. And I know if you, if you assume, ask that of you and me, I get it. But when you watch the introductory press conference with him and you watch the media tour afterwards and he actually took the time to read some of the things that some of his Colts players said about him, you're going to not judge him by that entire press conference. And everything he said yesterday, he seemed more comfortable. He seemed like he just wanted to, to get in a room and coach people up. He was really excited to talk to Jalen Hurts. I think they were at the Sixers game the other day. Um, and, and they were just excited to talk to one another. And and Nick Sirianni is obviously excited to be running the show. He's excited to be in a, a great sports town like Philadelphia and, and all that. As far as anything of substance, nothing. Didn't get anything out of it. He likes football. Cool. He's a football coach. So that works out well. Uh, Howie Roseman, though, I think let us in behind the scenes a little bit here. Howie Roseman let us into a couple of different things. Howie let us into what went down with the Carson Wentz deal, at least from Howie and the Eagles' perspective. And he gave two separate answers on it, but both kind of mean the same thing. Here is Howie Roseman when he was initially asked by Dave Spadaro on the Eagles' website about this, about what it took to move on from Carson Wentz and how they came to the conclusion, too, Move on from Carson Wentz. Here's how Rose been on that. It's no secret about how we felt about Carson Wentz as a Philadelphia Eagle, whether it was the process in going to trade up for him in the draft or extending him, you know, after the 2018 season. And then we had this season where there were some things that happened. And obviously, you know, Jalen ended up starting the last four games. And so uh, we had some conversations with him and his representatives about what was the best thing to go forward with. And when we were doing the coaching search, communicating with him um, and his agent and really productive, good conversations, you know, really good people. And they talked about maybe it was time for him to have a fresh start, that he was looking forward to a fresh start. And for us, we got to do what's in the best interest of our team. And as we went through it and went through the offers that we got and particularly the offer from the Colts and the opportunity to not only get the picks, but also get some financial flexibility back for our football team. Uh, We decided going forward that that was the right decision for us. And uh, that's where we are. 
they're no longer together. They broke up. Like, I wanted them to break up, and most of us wanted them to break up because you knew you couldn't solve the problem. But Howie, the main piece of news that comes out of there is that Howie more or less goes, this was their idea. We would have loved to work things out, but not not here, not now. Not going to work out here, unfortunately. This was all Carson's idea to move on. We tried to keep the lines of communication open, and, and, and he wanted out. It's similar to what we played for you yesterday with John Clark's interview with uh, Doug, uh, Doug Peterson, saying that, hey, so- sometimes tough things happen when you're a quarterback in the NFL, and Carson didn't like what happened. He, be- he got benched. Doug Peterson flat out said his quarterback got benched. That wasn't breaking news, but it was the first time we really <laughs> heard from the former head coach of the Eagles that, oh, yeah, I, I benched that guy. I mean, we saw it. We didn't need him to confirm it, but he said that. And Carson did not handle that well at all. As the now new version of the Michael Jordan meme, not the crying meme, but as the new version of the uh, Michael Jordan meme goes, and I took that personally. And that's kind of how Carson Wentz took it. So how we went on to kind of explain further uh, why they're no longer together. At the end of the day, understanding that he felt it was best for him to get a fresh start, understanding that it's hard to win in the National Football League and to win, you have to have a group of people who are all tied together and invested in what's going on here. Uh, we just felt like it, it was a fair trade. It was a good trade for, for the Colts. It was a good trade for the Philadelphia Eagles and where we are right now. And so um, we pulled the trigger. They pulled the trigger on the deal, and we all know what happened. Now, here's the little fun little added thing to it, to just to add to the drama with Carson Wentz being gone. So he goes to Indianapolis, does his press conference with the Colts. The Colts allow the Eagles media on the Zoom for the press conference and um, do not allow them to ask questions. No questions from Philadelphia. You shut your mouth, Philadelphia. He's done with you, Philadelphia. It's over Philadelphia, man. For uh, for all the breakup analogies that, that were rolled out by me, especially uh, for all the breakup analogies, this was the Colts played the role of the best friend. Like, no, you can't hurt him anymore. Evil Philadelphia media, you leave him alone. He's staying at my house. Anyway, that's how I took it. Um, I, I couldn't get over that. And wow, wow. I I, I know that a lot of people think they're being level-headed when they say, well, he's not with the Eagles anymore, so why should Eagles people be allowed to ask him questions? Well, because he spent the first five years of his career here. He had an MVP caliber season here. They won a Super Bowl with him on the roster, right? There's there's a lot of questions that are out there, and we've barely spoken to this man since all that stuff hit the fan. So, yeah, I think we deserve a couple of questions here to at least be answered by Carson, and then it should be up to Carson to be a big boy about it and be like, Hey, you know what? I appreciate my time in Philadelphia. I'll miss that city, all the friends and relationships. Just give me that. You can't say no questions. Stop talking from the team. It wasn't like Carson Wentz was some free agent and he signed there. He literally got traded. And you're not allowing that that fan base's media to ask a couple of questions at the press conference? That's, that's atrocious. And you know what? If this was Carson's idea then he might be down that same path that he was here where the the the, the team itself is just going to coddle him and tell him everything he wants to hear and tell him his, uh, you know, his, his, his poopy don't stink. But anyway, I'm over it now, and I'm not going to be angry anymore. We have our own problems here in Philadelphia. We need to know if Jalen Hurts is going to be the guy going forward. We need to know if Howie Roseman is going to po- potentially draft a quarterback early in this N- NFL draft coming up uh, in the, in less than a month and a half. So, one of the things they did address in this in this interview on Eagles.com, PhiladelphiaEagles.com with Dave Spadaro, Nick Sirianni being on it as well, uh, how he was flat out asked about that sixth overall pick and what direction the Eagles are going to go. And uh, from what it seems like, Howie Roseman is saying uh, he's not turning a blind eye to anything. Everything is on the table. Listen to Howie Roseman's answer on what they're going to do with that sixth overall pick. We're going to look at every option to improve the football team. Like you said, we have one on the roster, so you know we're adding to the roster. And then when you look at that sixth pick, um, you know, in 20 years, uh, uh, we've had a top 10 pick. We've earned a top 10 pick twice. You know, we traded up with Carson. We didn't have the pick in the top 10. And so we owe it to the organization to do our due diligence on anyone that could be available at that pick that we think has a chance to be a great player. And so we're not going to limit it by position. We're going to look at all of those guys. We're going to dig into them. It's a different offseason. I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit. 
but I, I, we will go through everything and, and an entire process on every position, including the quarterback position. Nick, if we could just dive into Jalen just a little bit more. And as you went back. Um, I meant to cut that earlier. My apologies. Uh, he didn't really go on anything except Jalen Hurts buys time. That's what uh, Nick Sirianni got into. But Howie Rosen put it out there on the table, as you would almost expect. But the fact that he kind of re-teed up the quarterback idea when he was asked about what the, where, the direction they could go with the six overall pick, the fact that he re-teed that up to say, oh, yeah, even quarterback. It is interesting. It does perk my ears up a little bit. I still very much doubt they do that. I think Kyle Pitts is going to be here in Philadelphia or uh, Jamar Chase will be here in Philadelphia, Devontae Smith. I think a weapon is going to be here for Jalen Hurts to throw to. I don't think it's going to be an offensive lineman. I don't think it's going to be a defensive back. I think it is going to be a weapon for Jalen Hurts to throw to, uh, not a quarterback. They will take a quarterback later in this draft. Howie points out that you have to because they only have one under contract right now. But the fact that he kind of re-highlights that a little bit, it makes me think, and probably other GMs, when Howie's going to be doing this little tour, not just with the media, but also when talking to other GMs and kind of getting a flavor of what the market's going to be. I have no doubt how he's going to have that poker face, not allowing other people to know what direction uh, what direction they want to go. So we'll continue to follow this. Uh, as you know, uh, I am um, I, I I still can't get over the idea that Carson Wentz isn't here anymore. Not just because I had some attachment to Carson Wentz and like I was holding on to him to be this like golden child for the Eagles, but uh, for trading up. And having the success that you had early on with them, and then for that to fall apart, I, I don't just look at the, I don't look at the Carson Wentz camp and go, "This is your fault." I don't look at the Eagles and go, "Your fault." I look at both those guys, both those bodies, both those camps, and go, "What the hell happened here?" It was so good, and then it was ruined, <laughs> ruined. How did you let that happen? And one of the things we'll get into with Brandon Graham is a, a comment he made. Uh, to uh, Zach Berman, who he had, we had on this show. And Zach Berman uh, came out, and I asked him, I said, uh, you know, about the comment Car uh, Brandon Graham made when Brandon said that it's a tough city to play for. I feel like we're absolved as a, as a fan base here. This was so screwed up between those two parties, between Wentz and the Eagles. I feel like as as fans, we can just sit back and go, oh, no, no, not this time. <laughs> like we We've run other people out of town. Not this time. So we'll get into that with Brandon Graham as well coming up in just a second, but that was Howie Roseman with uh, with Dave Spadaro on the Eagles team website. Yesterday, that interview dropped as soon as the new league year uh, came about. Um, those were some of the things that were discussed. Uh, some people hit me up here uh, saying, uh, Mike, I Farzi, Mally, good to hear from you again. Inside the Birds checking in. Appreciate you. Barry Magnoni, my man, the hatchet himself checking in on the program. BG is my favorite player. Love the attitude and passion he brings in this game. I uh, would love to get a chance to meet him in person someday. Would be thrilled to show him my locker room. I think he'd want to go to your locker room. Uh, I, that place looks awesome. So uh, we'll get to Brandon Graham uh, in just a second because it was a tough night. Like I said, Flyers get blown out 9 to nothing. Sixers were up 20 against the Bucks. Blew the lead. Fell apart in the third quarter. Couldn't hold on in the fourth quarter. And, yes, they did not have Joel Embiid, and we certainly acknowledge that. But when you see a game in hand that you can, you, it's in your grasp and you let it slip through your fingers, no matter what, that's going to get under your skin, uh, to say the least. Uh, before we get to our friend Brandon Graham coming up in just a second, I want to tell you about my good friend Steven Singer of Steven Singer Jewelers. Steven takes care of people. That's what he does. You know what he does? He, he takes care of people with the perfect price. And I even sent my good friend Robert over there. Robert's getting married, needs wedding bands. And he said, you know what, Mark, you know that Steven Singer guy? Is, is, are you, is that just talk? Or would you really send people to him? I go, what I really, I always send people to Steven Singer of Steven Singer Jewelers, the other corner of 8th and Walnut. Personal friends, right? Family member, my own brother I sent to Steven Singer Jewelers. And I sent my buddy Robert there too just the other day. He shot me a text afterwards and said that it was an incredible experience. N no haggling, no negotiating, no pressure. All you got to worry about is buying the ring that you want to buy, buying the diamond, buying the jewelry that you want to buy at Steven Singer Jewelers. With everything at the perfect price, his team of real jewelers are set up for you to come in and get a consultation and make sure they walk you through everything there at Steven Singer Jewelers. And Steven wants you to let you, let, you, let you in on a little insider tip here. Real jewelers shouldn't mark things up, and that's what Steven, think, Steven Singer is. He doesn't mark up his diamonds just so you feel like you're getting a deal when you maybe negotiated a couple of bucks off. No, no, no. It's not how it works. 
Steven, what he does, he gets everything at the perfect price. So, you know, when you walk in, you can feel comfortable. The guy next to you isn't paying more, uh, less than you. And you can just go in there and worry about what you walked in to worry about, which is a simple thing. Buying a huge, you know, a big purchase, an important purchase in your life. A diamond, a piece of jewelry from Steven Singer of Steven Singer Jewelers. Check him out the other corner of 8th and Walnut or I hate Steven Singer. Dot com. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to play for you right now on the Zato's Investments guest line. My conversation yesterday uh, with uh, a new friend of the show, Brandon Graham. Check it out. The bed at night. He checks under his bed for three people. One is Eli Manning. The other is Nick Foles. The other is our guest. Eagles great. Eagles legend. Mr. Strip Sack himself. Mr. Pro Bowler, Brandon Graham. What's up, BG? Hey, what's up, man? <laughs> it's great to have you on. I appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your busy day. I know you got the kids running around and everything, so thanks for joining us here. Uh, here's what's amazing. I remember you walking off the field in New Orleans. You go and hug our mutual friend, Derek Gunn. You're very emotional. At the time, I think you thought that you were played your last game as a Philadelphia Eagle. You end up getting a new contract, and then recently, just a couple of days ago, you get a contract extension. Did you ever think that was going to be the case when you were walking off the field that night in New Orleans? Man, it's been so many of those times where I thought I was packed up and I was about to be out of here. You know, even with Chip Kelly, them Chip Kelly days, man, I thought I was gone. And um, but I mean, just to do another another year, another extension, man, I'm I'm thankful, man, because you know a lot of guys, you know, we don't get to stay at the same place and. Um, you know, just do what I'm doing. This is rare. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely thankful. Happy Howie and Mr. Lurie, you know, believe in me. And um, I just want to keep getting better uh, and just go out on my terms, hopefully with another ring. It's wild. I mean, you talk about, you know, that that age of 30 and here you are you know, a year or two past it now. And you seem to be going into your best years, or at least in the middle of your best years, your last three of the four seasons, at least sack wise, your numbers have never been higher. You made your first Pro Bowl. Do you feel yourself at least maintaining now that you're such a veteran of the league? I do, but I, I do want to take it to an, an, one more level if I can to get the. I'm trying to. My, my goal is uh, to get on that first team All Pro one year, lead the league in sacks one year, uh, and that's that's either this year or next year. But I know how. I know this year has got to be the year. It got to be the year I get double digits. You know what I'm saying? And um, hopefully um, we, we making that run towards, you know, getting that ring too. But um, I do know I only got a couple more years, man, and I, I'm doing all I can. I'm eating right, eating the best I ever ate. Um, during the season, it's going to be even better, better than I've been doing it. And, man, let's see what happens. Now, you yourself have displayed great versatility throughout your career. You mentioned Chip Kelly, where you all of a sudden found yourself as a linebacker. So uh, when you think about the versatility you've shown through the course of your career and how you've had to change and adapt to different head coaches, you're going to have to do that again now with uh, Jonathan Gannon as your new defensive coordinator and Nick Sirianni as your new head coach. What have you heard about now your uh, defensive coordinator and your head coach, your new head coach uh, to this point? Um, just – you know the, the 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 core values he's gonna go by uh, uh, just with the head coach. I haven't talked to Gannon too much about. Uh, he's just excited to get me in, and you know he he got some stuff that he want to show us when, when we can uh, once we go virtual uh, starting next month. And I think that um, you know everything, man. I, I'm excited for for them just being excited. They 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 got they they look like they just want to gain our trust, and and obviously that's what we gotta gotta gain together. And so uh, you just got to get people that's bought in. Uh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna lead the best I, I know how um, by by uh, example. And then you know I'm gonna talk a little bit too, like I always do. <laughs> but uh, I know, man. Uh, I, I'm just excited because we got a young young group and um uh, and and you know we got a lot of changes that's gonna happen in the building that uh, I'm excited for. Yeah. Have you talked to Nick Sirianni yet? Yeah, yeah. That's why I was saying like I talked with him more. Uh, about the core values of what he's trying to, you know, uh, what he's trying to put out there uh, for the team and, and what he goes by on a daily basis. And then, um, you know, for uh, for me, it's just, you know, just trying to let him know that I'm all in and I'm trying to relay his message, his message. He's, he's telling me, as soon as he tell me, you know, I'm, I'm able to, you know, do what I can do uh, with the team to let him know so we can all be on the same page. Great. Uh, where were you when you found out that Doug Peterson would not be returning as your head coach? Uh, I was in Philly. I stayed in. I stayed in Philly. Uh, just bought a place out here, and so uh, just making it home. And uh, hopefully, when I'm done, 
uh, be, be either doing something with the Eagles and then eventually doing something with you doing because I know uh, I want to try try everything. Uh, but I do want to take some time to spend with the family, make sure that uh, I, don't, I don't rush in it too quick before I get back to work, you know. Mm-hmm. What was your reaction when you found out Doug wasn't going to be back? Uh, I was I was really more so just like I, w- I was shocked. I was shocked because you just heard them say some good stuff about him, you know, being here and all that stuff. And then it just went sour real fast. But um, I mean, I'm I. I know Doug's gonna go somewhere and and, and show what he you know what he could do like like how he do. Uh, but I think that uh, um, the worst part for him was COVID happening because he was real good at, at at bringing the team together, keeping the team tight, and he couldn't really do that with all the COVID restrictions. You know, it didn't play into his favor. So um, I know for him, I'm just more so excited uh, just to see. Um, just where he goes and 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 how if he get a, another head coaching job, um, you know where where that would be because uh, he is a good head coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what? Look, we've mentioned the coaches and the changes there that you've really experienced as a player. I mean, from Andy Reid to Chip Kelly to Doug and now Nick Sirianni. But now in the locker room, the leadership has turned over a bunch. I mean, you're still there, obviously. Fletcher Cox still there. But now, I mean, Carson Wentz is moving on with his career. He's been traded to Indianapolis, as you know. Uh, Malcolm Jenkins, the the previous year, goes to New Orleans. And now it also looks like Zach Ertz is most likely out of Philly as well. Uh, Nothing's happened yet, but it seems like that's going to be, at least his era is going to be ending here as well. How do you transition? How does the locker room transition, not just with leaders leaving and coaches leaving, but kind of everything in its entirety changing over? Uh, Well, really, I mean, we still got McLeod and the DBs. Like, you know, we got our defense. We got most of us that's that's been here. Uh, you got guys like Lane, Lane that's been here. Uh, they're gonna have to they're gonna have to start rubbing off on these on these young guys, and it's gonna take all of us. Jason Kelsey, it's gonna it's just it's just on for me on defense. I can worry, you know, about the defense, and when the offense come around, as far as you know, when I see guys, because when you go when you in the locker room, you're talking. Uh, if you start to see things that you know that you need to correct, I mean, don't be afraid to address it because that's that's what make that's what really makes good teams. Uh, people all having the same goal, and and whenever we get thrown off and, and some you know is not going towards our goal, you know we got to get reminded, and it's just the way that you present it uh, to people. You got to learn how to talk to people. You got to learn how to communicate, and communication, I feel, is is, is going to be real big in gaining the trust of one another and, uh, uh, you know, connecting with the coaches too. When you think of Jalen Mills, who's now the one of the newest members of the – one of the many new members of the uh, New England Patriots, when you think of Jalen Mills, what first comes to mind? Man, he's, he's going to give you everything he got every play. And uh, I'm excited for him, man. Uh, I didn't know how this thing was going to go uh, this offseason. I thought we was going to bring him back, but I'm glad he got paid. New England, you know, they out there spending money right now. They got a bunch of guys. <laughs> Everybody, I think. I don't think there's a single free agent that signed elsewhere, to be honest with you. Man, you know, I see A.J. Green sign with uh, um, Arizona. Boy, that's – woo. I was like, <laughs> boy's trying to win now. They got J- – <laughs> I say, I see him. <laughs> All right, well, well, they'll catch your attention there in the, uh, in the NFC. Uh, so the goal for you, through with this extension, you want to retire here as a Philadelphia Eagle. I would love to um, definitely retire as an Eagle. Um, you know, it just I just feel it's only right uh, for me, especially at this point in my career. But um, I do want to end on a great note, man. And so hopefully I can uh, – hopefully this not no rebuild, nothing, and we just go out there and just get it done because we all working together. You know what I'm saying? Because it's every year everybody got an opportunity. Everybody is, is even. Like, you know, you really have to – you really have to factor in a lot of guys. Yeah, you might have it on paper, as we know, the dream team, but we got to work well together. You know what I'm saying? You got to – it's how y'all communicate with each other, who can sacrifice on, on certain on certain times when certain things come up and things happen in the game. Um, you don't have people pouting and doing all this crazy stuff. If we got a, a team, a collective of people that just, you know, just got one goal, man, and let's go out there and win games – Man, we should be all right, and I and that's gonna be the the message, man. It's just we know that we all can play, but it's all about how can we uh, go through adversity, man. And you're gonna see, you will see it a lot. You see it a lot with teams, man. They get everybody and they get it all super souped up, but if they don't play well together or work well together, it's just, I mean, you know how destructive that could be.
Uh, certainly. I mean, you mentioned the, the dream team of 2011, and I'm glad you prefaced that by saying that was just on paper. You got to go out on the field and prove it. So I feel like you dispelled any curse that might linger with that moniker, dream yeah. team. So thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, now, yeah. I want to ask you about Carson Wentz moves on to Indianapolis. We talked about uh, Doug Peterson. Were you shocked? Were you surprised at Carson Wentz moving on with his career and the Eagles trading him to Indianapolis? No, I'm not. I'm not shocked at all because it's hard. It's hard to play in Philly, man. Y'all, y'all tough. Uh, it's real tough. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, when I first in the beginning, when I went through all that stuff with my knee and having to come back, it was tough because a lot of guys uh, ahead of me, were after me, was having all the success. Earl Thomas, JPP won a Super Bowl his first year. You know what I'm saying? And, and it was just a lot. Well, his second year because uh, I think Green Bay won 2010. Yeah, they won. 20. Yes. Yeah, but um, just knowing that they having all that success, Pro Bowls, all that, and I'm hearing the bus bus label, all that, man. I was stressed out, didn't know, but it takes somebody to be able to come back from it. And I just felt like with all the stuff that went down with Carson, I'm happy that he got a place, especially with a with a guy that 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 was here when he got here and and helped him uh, start off real fast. So hopefully he can get back to being who he is, and, you know, um, I just felt like it was good for both because of the con quarterback controversy. Now Jalen can be the guy, and you don't have to feel, you know, too much uh, about it, and, it, and now we can move forward. Uh, it, just, it just worked better for both for, for both parties. Now, now that I agree with. That last part I agree with. But as far as us being tough, I mean, we, don't get me wrong. We have we've, – we've ran our fair share of people out of town. Yeah. But as, as fans and being a tough fan base, but I felt – the Carson Wentz deal was more about an organizational thing. Like I feel like, especially after an MVP caliber season, a Super Bowl run, I feel like people were giving chances to Carson Wentz. I mean, there were some people that said, how do you let, let, let go of Nick Foles and all that? But I felt like a lot of people didn't want Jalen Hurts drafted. They wanted help for Carson Wentz taken at that spot and maybe help defensively someone that would have played more in the first year as a rookie. Uh, I, I got to say, I got to say, as a fan base and somebody closely monitoring the fan base, I don't feel like Carson Wentz is one of those guys run out of town it just felt like it was it was a bad marriage between the team and the player that needed to break up yeah and that's really that's really what it what it was like you know what i'm saying but i'm just saying with him playing bad it didn't it, it it hurt like you know for him on the inside of him playing bad and him just having that passion you know uh to, to go out and win and it wasn't happening it was just it's, it was tough on him that mm -hmm. and, you know, that's what i that's what i mean okay like, you know, it was, it was tough because, I mean, I know Carson, he a competitor. When he first got here, that boy, he was just on fire. And it was and it was who you work with uh, sometimes. And so I'm happy he back with Frank, man. Um, you might be, you know, on to something with, with what you just said on the uh, with the Carson thing. It's just like, you know, it, it's tough when you – he made do with what he had, you know what I'm saying? And I, I can say that uh, because when we, when we went and we got to the super, I mean, uh, to the playoffs last year, he had to make that run. And we all didn't put him in a good position, but a lot of guys was injured this year. The whole line was injured. Uh, injury has, you know, hurt us a lot. But I think, um, you know, it, it was good for both parties this time because, uh, like I say, it just didn't, it just didn't, it started getting bad. It started getting bad uh, in our case, you know, for both of them. Uh, you you mentioned Jalen Hurts a second ago, and you talked about hopefully not a long rebuild, no rebuild as a matter of fact. How confident are you Jalen Hurts can be that guy to help lead this team right back to the playoffs? Man, I'm confident, man. Uh, I seen, I just feel like now when you know you're the guy, it, it, just, it just does something different to you, especially now with him working during the offseason. I mean, I'm going in knowing that, thinking I'm the guy, and I'm about to go out here, like, what are you doing now, working out with other receivers, getting the timing down, getting that chemistry together, and with the minds of, of the new coaches, man, I'm excited for what's to come, especially if we can get everybody on one page and, and, and keep everybody healthy. Because our old line, man, I'm telling you, best in the business with, with the coach that we got, uh, Stout. Stout is a great old line coach. Great, great run coordinator. I mean, man, he he, he does a great job. And um, it always starts up front, and it's going to be me, Fletch, and, you know, whoever else that's take that next leap um, uh, coming out next year. And, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just excited, man, because we, we got some hungry dogs for sure this year. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I've asked you this question in the past when the Eagles uh, had their uh, first-round draft pick. They ended up taking Jalen Rager. And I believe you told me you wanted them to take a wide receiver. This year, number six, I know it's not defensive end, where would you like the Eagles to go at number six? Uh, 
You either go Kyle or Chase. <laughs> oh, all right. Kyle Pitts, My Chase. I like Kyle. Oh. I'm starting to like Kyle a lot. You know, oh. it makes sense, but you know, um, Kyle or Chase, either one. All right, fine by me, man. Jamar Chase or Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts, I don't want to brag or anything, went to my high school. He was just a little bit of a better athlete than I was. But anyway, um, <laughs> we didn't graduate together, so that don't anyway. Uh, but looking at um, uh, some other things here in the near future, you want to retire here in Philadelphia. You want to get into the broadcasting biz afterwards? Yeah, I'm thinking, um, you know, I got a, I got a couple offers. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just going to weigh my options, man, see what I want to try first and see – uh, which one I can kind of make my own schedule on because I don't want to be uh, consumed with all the football as much as I have now. And being a coach, I don't know if I want to be a coach because it, it is time consuming depending on the coach that you have, the head yeah. coach. Yeah, and you got little kids. And let, just for the record, you're doing this interview right now in your garage because the kids are just running crazy in the house. Running crazy. Uh, wifey in there too, but she was on the phone. So I knew uh, I, I had to run out of there because they know we both distracted. So uh, they started going crazy and just yelling and running around and just doing what they wanted to do. It was free. Uh, <laughs> uh, real, just on Jalen, one last thing on Jalen Hurts. The the word on him is the work ethic is off the charts. Have you witnessed that as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. He consistent. He consistent every day. That's what we all strive to be, man. But you can tell that he's been, uh, you know, watching somebody and, and, and every day he's always in them same spots. You see him working, warming up. You see him uh, on the field competing i mean he he has a lot of fun he talks jump he talks he goes back and forth with you i love that uh that competitiveness and so i think that um we just gotta we just gotta rally around them man and just go out there and just and just be free it, it ain't no expectations people don't think that we're gonna come out and do anything so it's on us it's on us on how we how we do this thing so I, that's what i'm more excited about all right now he doesn't talk more than you though right huh he doesn't talk. Jalen Hurts doesn't talk more than you, though, right? No, nah, he's a little more smoother than me. He, he, he'll chill. He'll, go, he'll really go show you. You know, oh. or He can tell you. I can do both, but, you know, I might talk a little more, too. <laughs> I, I don't know if I've ever asked you this question. Who's funnier between you and Fletcher Cox? Who gets your vote? You know what? I got to go with uh, – I mean, I'm I'm always pick myself, but, you know, Fletch, uh, Fletch, is, Fletch is a funny guy. He got some uh, old country jokes, man, the way, the way he put it together. Uh, definitely uh, how you laugh. All right, good enough. Uh, now, last thing for you. I've noticed that you're notorious, really, for posting your workout videos. I know a lot of people during quarantine, they put on a couple extra LBs, myself Ooh. included. Would you mind if we just ran through a couple of your workouts and you just tell me how you attack it? Hey, well, how I do it, man, it's all about how you eat, really. Uh, all right, well, let me, let me show you this because I took the time to do some production work here. Uh, this right here. All right, so we just got some, uh, what, some squats? Ooh, yeah, 315, five seconds lower. And then, uh, you know, we, we did the running and all that stuff first, uh, the stuff you see on the field right there, all that. We did that early Oh, uh, before we started lifting. And all right. Doing that, man, um, is really about your eating because I can do that. I did a little bit of that for a whole month and was eating bad, and I gained about 10 pounds myself. So uh, it's all about your eating, your eating habits. I eat four times a day, uh, every three hours, and you know I'm eating, uh, eating clean. And so, all right, mm -hmm. I'll try that. How about this one right here? What's what's going on here? Um, I'm not sure if you're being tortured or not. <laughs> what? Hey, it's Pilates, man. Hey, it's, it's 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 trying to have more control of my core and have control of my body. Something that uh, if I could tell my younger self, I would have been doing that uh, because man, I've been trying to get abs for a long time, or trying to at least have some core strength. Uh, so that I can help uh, with some of the grunting and all the fighting that you do on the O-line, uh, O-line, D-line. But uh, this year, man, I'm just trying to, like I say, just trying to keep getting better as the time go and go out on my time. All right. Is this is this Pilates as well? What is this one here? This looks like you are literally, you were kidnapped by someone and you're being tortured. What is this here? <laughs> Boy, that's, it's, that's, that's Pilates too. And the, and the teacher don't make it no better because she's so intense. And it's, and it's really, you don't get as much rest. It's like you got to do this and then just thinking your your abs is just fired up and then you got to go do another thing. And you like, you know, just feel like you got a Charlie horse in the middle of your stomach. All right. <laughs> last last one for you. This one looks like it's in tandem. I hope this is your wife. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's my wife. You know, that's that's when the pandemic first started uh, last year uh, before the season uh, around April, May. And man, we was we was getting it every day. 
Um, I was loving it because we got to work out together for the first time um, all the all the time. So that that really uh, helped us grow closer even even more. You know, doing that together. Oh yeah, my wife and I started that immediately once we saw you guys, man. Tell yeah. me about. Uh, I just I just want to let you know this. We have Hugh Douglas on every Tuesday. We call it Hugh's Day, and he was singing your praises this week, man, and very happy for you as I'm happy for you uh, with your contract. And I'm glad your goal is to stay here in Philadelphia and get right back to that. And hopefully another Super Bowl championship. Thank you so much. I really do feel it. I do. I do believe, man. It's about our attitude, and that's going to be the message coming back on top of whatever coach you know. What I'm saying talking about too. So I, I know it's a bunch of good stuff coming. We just got to go out there and believe in it and go do it. That's it. Well, it couldn't happen to a better guy, Brandon Graham. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Best of luck with the rest of the off season, and we'll catch up with you again soon. Get back to those kids. How about your wife? I'm on my way. I kid you not. Uh, I kid you not. Uh, and thanks again to Brandon Graham joining us there on the Zados Investments guest line. I kid you not. Uh, he We started talking. He's walking around his house looking for a quiet place because the kids were running all over. And he just goes, you know what? I'm going to go to the garage. And I was like, hey, man, you do what you got to do. I just appreciate the time. And, uh, of course, yeah, he did run back in to help out the misses and those two have a such a wonderful relationship and that's great uh so thanks again to brandon graham joining us on these ados investments guest line i love his honesty brandon what do you want the eagles to do with the six overall pick kyle pitts and jamar chase I, he melted my brain for a second because i didn't think he was gonna give me two options and then uh i i, I like last year i remember asking him the same question and he said he, he wanted them to go with a wide receiver he wanted the Eagles to go with somebody that would be a weapon for Carson. Well, now it's along those same lines where he wants to make sure that Jalen Hurts gets a weapon as well. I'm on the Kyle Pitts bandwagon. And no, it's not because of the high school thing. It's because he's a stud. And I need him on this team. And you should have just copy and pasted Jer uh, Daniel Jeremiah's uh, draft from last year. And then you'd have Justin Jefferson. And I'd be a happier Philadelphia Eagles fan. Uh, and Brandon Graham might be enjoying a couple more well, at least playoff victories last year. Maybe it's a totally different story if you have Justin Jefferson here. But yeah, it's now time to go out there and make sure you do get that weapon early in the draft. Imagine this, because I still think Jalen Rager can play. And I, you won't talk about a work ethic. Jalen Rager's got a great work ethic. I would love to see Jalen Rager on this team next year with Kyle Pitts on this team next year. Or even Jamar, not even, but Jamar Chase on this team as well. I, I loved what I heard from Brandon Graham. And I'm glad he didn't push back when I push back on the idea that we ran Carson out of town. Because I do believe if there was ever a situation where we just went, not us, didn't do it, we were actually the same looking people. Imagine that in the battle between Carson Wentz and, um, and, and the Philadelphia Eagles. And I think what Brandon was more so trying to highlight, and this is what he's on the same page with Zach Berman, who interviewed him a couple of weeks ago for The Athletic, when Brandon Graham just flat out said that we are a tough city to play in, I think what he means by that is not that we ran him out of town. It's more so the idea that <laughs> when things aren't going great, it can pile on here, not necessarily because we're doing that on purpose as a fan base, but because everyone knows how bad we want to win as a city. So if Carson's hurt or he's not playing well, he knows it's something that we're all noticing. It's not like we're going to slap anybody in the butt and say, hey, you know what? Good try. Good hustle. See you later. No, no, no. That's not how it works in Philadelphia. We, we're more of the strict father type of uh, parent than we are a nurturing mother. And that's the analogy I always like to make. But with Carson, I think he took a lot of that to heart. And when he knew we were given that as a fan base, and then he also started to see pushback from the organization itself, and then he got benched. Yeah, then I think it was time for him to go. And if you go back to Howie Roseman's conversation, with Dave Spadaro on the Eagles team website that we played for you earlier, he said it was Carson's idea to leave. I think the team wanted to salvage it. I still think that, I still think the team could have handled it a hell of a lot better, maybe not drafting Jalen Hurts, maybe drafting somebody that would have helped them last year uh, at the 53rd overall pick. They chose not to do that, and I think Carson took exception to that right out of the gate. And it's not a matter of not wanting to compete. It's a matter of the organization you're trying to help win, not doing everything they can to help you win. And I think that's more or less what it comes down to above every, everything else. So I'm glad that Brandon went down that, that road. And how about this? Uh, he wants to get into broadcasting. Not at all surprised. 
Not at all surprised. Brandon, Brandon Graham wants to get into uh, broadcasting. He has a couple of offers. I should have I should have made him a pitch. Damn it. Missed opportunity. Uh, but yeah, I think he'll be uh, he'll be great in that role. I know the fun loving guy like that will be very relatable, very relatable for a lot of people. And uh, he's a guy that you just you can't help but root for. And and one last thing on on just that conversation before we get to our sponsors and some of our other stuff here, it's really wild to think about this. Uh, Brandon Graham, what thirty two years old, and he's talking about making first team All Pro, finally getting double digits in sacks and winning another Super Bowl. I'll take that all day. Brandon, you do whatever weird type of workouts, Pilates you want to do, whatever. I don't care if you want to start goat yoga and say that this is the new best thing you could ever do. Whatever keeps you on the squad, whatever keeps you playing at a high level, whatever keeps you versatile, continue to go after it. And whatever keeps you as that high energy guy, oh yeah, by all means, man, just, just go after it. Nick Sirianni, Jonathan Gannon, extremely lucky to have that man in the locker room, especially after all the turnover that's happening right now with the Philadelphia Eagles. And you know what? This actually couldn't have worked out better in terms of when we got a chance to talk to him because I've been saying we were planning a special guest for you for the last two days. And after everything happened with the Flyers last night, after everything happened with the Eagles last night, and then listening to Howie give that uh, little uh, interview yesterday on the team website, it was good just to hear somebody that we we really do trust to deliver and that's Brandon Graham. So my thanks to him again for joining us uh, on today's program. I do want to tell you about DraftKings, though. Last night, not my night, DraftKings, they want to make sure you're taking advantage of all that the college tournament has to offer. So get involved with DraftKings and put your real basketball knowledge to the test. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now and take advantage for new customers this great offer. Bet $4 on an underdog, and you could win 200 $56. If they win, it's just that simple. Turn $4 into $256 and you can take advantage of this offer with DraftKings. Every dollar you bet could turn into $64. Gotta like that, that odds. You gotta like that equation, right? Uh, pick one of the many college basketball teams who are underdogs and if they, if they win, you get $256 on a $4 bet. It is just that simple. No better way to put your college basketball knowledge to the test than to put your money where your mouth is with DraftKings Sportsbook. Don't worry if college basketball isn't for you. DraftKings Sportsbook offers great odds and promotions on hockey, golf, and so much more. DraftKings safe, secure, and reliable so you can deposit or withdraw your funds at your convenience. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code FARZY. That's promo code FARZY to sign up for your chance to turn $4 into $256. So do so right now. That's code FARZY. Turn $4 into $256 for limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older. Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply in partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. We've been talking about these guys a heck of a lot, ladies and gentlemen. That's Zados Investments. They're the up-and-coming luxury real estate development and investment company in the Philadelphia area. They design and develop top-of-the-line custom homes all around the city of Philadelphia, ranging from small, single-family rehabs to ground-up new construction townhomes and condo buildings. Zados also works closely with their private investor base, uh, investor base, which you could be a part of, by the way, to provide them with substantial returns on their investment, ranging from 20 to 40%. Zados Investments, killing it right now in the Philadelphia market, doing a, an amazing job in the real estate game. Uh, to learn uh, about their properties and also how you can invest with Zados, go to info at zadosinvestments.com or visit zadosinvestments.com. Uh, and how about these guys? If you haven't gotten the Fan Up app, uh, then you need to do so right now. And I just, I just want a challenge. Just want a challenge on the Fan Up app last night. Me and my man Kerry were betting back and forth what was going to happen. He had said that Giannis Antetokounmpo was going to outscore Ben Simmons and Tobias Harris combined. Well, I was looking pretty brilliant because I said, "You crazy." And on the Fan Up app that I downloaded, you go to the App Store, download the Fan Up app, use promo code Fan Up to get two thousand points right out of the gate. But I said that's not going to happen, and I was looking pretty brilliant for most of the game. And then Giannis, of course, just started to unleash the freak in him, and he started to just play amazing basketball. I believe they ended up tying. They ended up tying, so it was a push, actually, which is still not exciting. Not no, not exciting for Giannis to nearly outscore two players for the Sixers, but that's, that's what happened last night. Uh, I believe Tobias and Ben both combined for 32. Meanwhile, Giannis dropped. 32. So you can take advantage of all that stuff on the Fan Up Out app. Download the Fan Up app. 
The days of playing fantasy sports alone are over, and you can enjoy Fan Up Super Fun daily and weekly contests, answer fun questions, and you could rise on their leaderboard. You could also squat up with your friends, and Fan Up is the only place you can win brand prizes. Louis Vuitton bags, a pair of Jordans, rookie cards of some of the best athletes in the games right now. So take advantage of all that and more with the Fan Up app. Download the app in the App Store. Use promo code FANUP to get 2,000 bonus points. Fan Up, may the best fan win. How about our social media check-in brought to you by our friends at Steak and Main. Steakandmain.com, great dining in the heart of Northeast Maryland. Take advantage of all they have to offer with Steak and Main and my man, Tony Cavada. Uh, Macon Mall just uh, hits us up saying, we choked. All right, I know that doesn't mean the Flyers because the Flyers didn't choke. The Flyers, for to choke, you have to still be breathing a little bit, right? You have to be able to like, <gasps> like at least get some air, right? <laughs> Sixers choked. And yes, they didn't have Embiid. I get it. And yes, Seth Curry missed uh, a lot of the second half because it was an ankle injury turn. I get it. But when you go through that third quarter, and you can't throw the ball in the ocean from three, and you keep shooting threes, maybe just do something to control possession. I'm not saying you kill clock midway through the third quarter, but you just, you know, take take the liberty. Take the liberty of getting to the line, getting fouled, trying to make some points that way. Everything doesn't have to be a three. And I know that's mind-blowing to a lot of people who are watching the NBA now and have only started watching the NBA recently, maybe over the last uh, 10 years. And everyone wants to shoot threes all day long. It, it doesn't hurt when you have some things going for you down low to maybe to to, to, to maybe uh, use that. I would I would enjoy that. Uh, uh, Josh hitting us up saying great interview. Thank you. Uh, should Thibel start over Danny Green? Uh, Jay Santino thirteen hitting us up there on uh, Twitter. Ah, now Danny Green's been very streaky, and it feels like Matisse Thibel is starting to really come into his own. And we've certainly been tracking that. Since we've been on the air. And I I would not be opposed to it. If that's the shakeup that needs to happen, I don't think they do anything drastic with Joel and uh, Joel and beat out. But I wouldn't, I mean, I think Matisse Thibel had to earn his minutes back that they started to give to uh Tyrese Maxey. He did that with flying colors, just with his defensive ability alone. And now this three-point game, it looks like it's starting to come along for him a little bit. Last night, probably not the best example for that, but why not give him a new challenge? Why not shake things up a little bit? If you start, this is the only time I would actually do this. If you really start to uh, get on the schneid, as they say, if that starts to happen, uh, then you need to look at Matisse. You need to look at Matisse Thibel as a possible starter. Then you need to shake something up in that starting lineup. If in the next two weeks, without Joel Embiid, you continue, you continue to slide, I wouldn't have any issue. I'd love to see uh, uh, Tyrese, uh, Tyrese uh, Matisse Thibel in the starting lineup at some point, if that's the way it happens. Uh, Inside the Birds, checking in with a flex. Always appreciate you. Uh, I don't believe we're on uh, YouTube today. I had a little production issue, so I don't think we're on YouTube today. My apologies for that. Uh, but people are hitting us up on Facebook and Twitter as well, so feel free to do that. Uh, Kyle Pitts all day. Jamar Chase, Waddle uh, all day. Uh, Santino's also checking in with that. Brandon is right. Eagles will be much better than pundits expect. Thank you, Ronnie. I agree. I, I think a lot of this goes on Jalen Hurts. I mean, he's the quarterback, so of course it does. But I think with the Eagles drafting somebody that will be a weapon for Jalen Hurts, I think they're actually going to be in a much better uh, position. And as far as a rebuild goes, I I, I think I think uh, Brandon's right on the money. There's This might not be much of a rebuild. I mean, let's think about this for a second. We looked at Andy Reid taking over for uh, Ray Rhodes. If you go back far enough. Andy Reid took over for Ray Rhodes. Within, what, a year they were in the playoffs? Um, Then you had Chip Kelly take over for Andy Reid. They were in the playoffs that first year. Then you had Doug Peterson come in for the real, what you thought was going to be dumpster fire, trying to rebuild everything. Two years later, they won a Super Bowl. So why should I look at this year and be like, man, it's going to be like five years before the Eagles are doing anything. It could be this year before the Eagles are really even competing for the playoffs. They could compete for the playoffs this year. They could give you the meaningful games in December. They could be a really good football team going into the season and coming out of the season as well. If Jalen Hurts is any semblance of the guy that they drafted in the second round, and if he's any semblance of the guy that maybe if he has an offensive line healthy and maybe he has a couple of weapons to throw to, I I think they can make some pretty dazzling plays offensively. And I think you still need to, although you still have 
members of this defense that need to step up. Fletcher Cox, Brandon, keeping it going for himself as well. I think that this team could still do very, very special things. So I hope to see that. My man Mike Fuji checking in on the show. Great interview with Brandon. Thank you. It's all Brandon. I just set Brandon up and he hits him out of the park. It's, that's how it works. Uh, that was a social media check-in brought to you by our friends at Stake and Main. Uh, our morning rush is brought to you by Sky Motor Cars and SkyMotorCars.com. And really, it comes down to one thing. It comes down to one thing when it comes to our uh, our morning rush today. Normally, I like to give you a flurry of stories. Not the case today, but I will tell you that I uh, – oh, I'll get to that at Big Bets. But uh, what if I told you that um, Giannis Antetokounmpo has no idea what a cheesesteak is? Uh, a friend, friend of the show, John Clark, NBC Sports Philadelphia, um, posted this last night, and this is Giannis Antetokounmpo, I believe, having his first whiz wit, and um, apparently this 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 broke his brain. I got I got the whiz 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 wit. That doesn't sound right to me though. Whiz wit whiz wit whiz wit. Okay. That doesn't sound right to me. That sounds like it's kind of shaky. You know, you know what I'm saying? But okay. No, 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 no. You know what's shaky, Giannis? You know what's shaky? Shaky is beating the 76ers in overtime, needing overtime to beat the 76ers who don't have Joel Embiid. And then you start basically dancing, spiking the football, uh, sitting in the middle of the court. Uh, I love Dwight Howard. And Dwight Howard said after the game that his uh, minus 13 was flat out despicable. And, and it, it is. However, I still love Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard comes out after the game and says when he saw Giannis Antetokounmpo sitting at midcourt, at center court, at the Wells Fargo Center, uh, he wanted to give him the stone cold, uh, stone cold sir. First off, Dwight Howard, I don't think I could love you anymore. Second, would have loved to have seen it, would have paid to have seen it. And I think the 3,000 fans that were there on hand at the Wells Fargo Center, they would have been like, you know what? We haven't been here for quite some time. Now we feel like we're really part of it now that we're seeing our player Stone Cold stutter somebody else. I'm all about it. Uh, love Dwight Howard. By the way, I don't know if this is true. I have no photographic evidence. But as part of our morning rush, um, shout out to my friend Anahi, uh, who I know from a bar I used to frequent up here in uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, she is a season ticket uh, Sixers fan. And when Dwight Howard went out after he was kind of getting the crowd into the game. If you remember that run, I think it was in the set. Yeah, it was in the second quarter. Apparently when he went to the bench, he sat down and started munching on some chicken nuggets. All I know, I remember Mark Sanchez ate some chicken fingers during an Eagles game. Once I remember Mark Sanchez had the hot dogs at the sideline was with the jets. I don't know too many people that would eat the, eat the food right there on the sideline while on the bench. I mean, and apparently Dwight Howard was enjoying himself some chicken nuggets. I did ask because I'm a journalist. Uh, no dipping sauce, so I don't know about uh, honey honey barbecue. I don't know about honey mustard. I don't know about barbecue sauce. I don't know about ketchup. I don't know. Apparently, he was just eating them dry. Uh, but uh, that's what Dwight Howard brings to the table. Thank you to my friend Anahi for uh, alerting me of that. That was our morning rush brought to you by Sky Motor Cars and SkyMotorCars.com. Big Bets segment brought to you by DraftKings and DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, download the app. And use promo code Farzy to turn four dollars into two hundred fifty-six dollars in the college basketball tournament. Uh, here's what I got for you. Last night I bet the Celtics. They were minus eight, I believe they were going into the game, or at least at the time that I bet them. And uh, they were playing the Cavs. I got a little chesty again, and I'm not going to let that happen. No, no, no. I was red hot, and now I'm like five hundred over like my last week and a half. And I don't like to be five hundred. I like to be a winner far and above being a winner, right? And unfortunately, that hasn't been the case lately. And I apologize to the people betting with me, especially when I was red hot to start things out. Um, so uh, I'm going to do what I normally do. I'm going to take the day off after a loss so I don't uh, compound the problem. Uh, but uh, I'm hoping that uh, at least our local teams can bounce back in the not too distant future. So we will get into uh, that a little bit more tomorrow. And I am happy to say I can tell you right now that after we had Brandon Graham today, we have another special guest for you tomorrow. And I love talking to this man. And uh, if you're watching the show right now, if you're listening to this podcast, if you're listening to this webisode, if you will, uh, there's one person to blame. And it's not me. <laughs> oh, no. Um, it's not uh, It's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, Josh Weinfeld, Buzz Sports and Entertainment. Uh, you know who it is? It's Mark Zumoff. This is Mark Zumoff's fault. And tomorrow, we're going to have him on this show. 
He has a very special announcement to make, and uh, we're going to talk to him tomorrow morning on this very program. Mark's going to make a um, a big announcement, and and how about this? I'm going to uh, thank him for uh, having us start this program because, again, it is his fault. We'll get to that tomorrow. We'll tell you that story tomorrow. But as for today, I appreciate you guys joining us. I appreciate Brandon Graham. How great was he? That, that interview is going to be available for the rest of the day. We're going to get things uploaded on YouTube so you can see it there. We'll keep it on uh, Twitter as well for people to follow uh, throughout on social media throughout the day. So thank you to some people that checked into the show for the first time because Brandon Graham was on. Hope you enjoyed it. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. live, then available throughout the day across all social media platforms, YouTube and Twitch included. Thanks to everybody who checked in. I just want to get a couple more comments in here. Um, Trade for Levine, Oladipo, or Beal. Yeah, I'm I'm all about it. Santino checks in. Garbage into gold. You're damn right. There's no other way to do it. And that's how uh, our man Mark Zumoff does it. So we'll talk to him tomorrow. Uh, thanks everybody for watching the show. Much appreciated. Have a great rest of the day. We'll be back to you tomorrow, back with you tomorrow with special guest Mark Zumoff. Have a great day, everybody. Take it easy.